Electricity is actually made up of extremely tiny particles called electrons that you cannot see with the naked eye unless you've been drinking. Alright, so I've been talking about making this video forever um, about hydrometers. Uh, and, well, first things first, this is some of the best beer on the planet. Lining Kugel's Sunset Weed is what I'm drinking right now. I hear the Berry Wise is even better, but I haven't tried it. It's uh, Lining Kugel's. We actually can buy it here at uh, our local Walmart, um, but uh, it's getting pretty popular these days. So that's what I'm drinking now. Um, okay, so this video is going to be all about this little gizmo. This is a hydrometer, and basically what a hydrometer does is it technically it measures the density of, uh, or the specific gravity, and thus the density of um, a liquid um, using displacement, which means uh, how much water does something uh, or liquid does something display uh, displace when you uh, when you put out a specified um, measuring tool in it. Um, <clears throat> it really comes in two parts. Comes in this nifty little tube which you fill up with the liquid, and this is used as your container. Anything will technically work, but um, this model comes with a little tube. Uh, you don't have to use a little tube. And this is the actual hydrometer. It's a um, very delicate little glass instrument. Uh, cost about I don't know, ten bucks or so, and uh, uh, ten to fourteen. At the local homebrew shop, it has a couple of different scales on here. It has potential alcohol by volume. If you rotate it, it has percent sugar, also called the balling. Um, that's what uh, the wine industry uh, standardizes on. And it also has the um, the standard specific gravity, which is what most homebrewers are um, used to using. And the whole concept here, and we're going to do this a couple of different times, is we fill this up with liquid and we bob this in here. And wherever the the liquid actually comes up to on the uh, <clears throat> the measuring scale is what our measurement is. And the whole principle behind this is if there is sugar dissolved in your solution, then it's going to push this up. The more sugar in the solution, the higher it pushes this up. The less sugar in your solution, the lower this goes. When it bottoms out completely, there's pretty much nil or no sugar in your solution. Um, when there's no sugar, that means the yeast have done all their work and you have as much alcohol as you're going to be able to, to get out of that batch. Um, so this is what we basically use to measure that fermentation is complete. Uh, we also use this to measure the actual alcohol um, uh, content of the, the wine. To get alcohol content measurements on the wine, you have to take a reading before fermentation to find out how much sugar is in the batch and then you take a reading after fermentation and that tells you how much sugar is left and the difference between that sugar level is alcohol and that tells you how much alcohol is left in your batch so I'm gonna do a little experiment first and then I'm gonna actually do some actual wine but the first thing we do is the most important I'm gonna put this back in its little tube and you'll see behind me I have three containers the first container contains sanitizer because we have to sanitize everything. The second container actually contains uh, water. Um, this water would normally be at room temperature for this little experiment, but I'm going to dissolve some sugar in it just to show you the difference um, uh, so it's a little bit warm. Uh, but that's just plain water, it's not wine. And here we have some, f some wine that's finished fermenting, but it hasn't actually um, been cleared yet. So that's what's behind me. First thing we're going to do is sanitize. So I'm going to grab my sanitizer. It's marked aptly as sanitizer. And I'm going to pour a liberal amount into the tube. I'm going to shake it up, get that everywhere. And I also really need to sanitize this. So I'm going to dip that in there. And you'll notice this almost completely bottoms out. Um, it, the reason it doesn't completely bottom out is because it um, uh, it does have some stuff dissolved in it because it's sanitizer. So this is all nice and sanitary. Now I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to pour this back in. Okay. 
because this is reusable and of course I have stuff all over my desk again alright so everything's sanitized we don't need this um, <clears throat> okay so now we're just gonna test regular plain old water uh, this is warm water so I am gonna fill the tube with water my wife's laughing about something what are you laughing about oh that's nasty she's talking about the two girls one cup video because I said fill in the cup and that's gross so we have just plain water and you're gonna see um, <clears throat> it almost completely bottoms out so I'm actually going to I can't see what the camera's doing right now so I'm just gonna move that over hopefully into the field of view and that almost completely bottoms out if you hold it up straight it does bottom out so that means there is no sugar this would be finished wine uh, there are no dissolved solids in this water so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this back in and just to show you the difference I'm going to in front of your very eyes amaze you I have a little funnel and this little bad boy is sugar so we are gonna make some sugar water not gonna get any big clumps so I've got a big thing of sugar I'm gonna pour that in there and I'll probably do two cups just to be safe one cup see if I can avoid the clump and this is purely for experimentation I'm just showing you what the hydrometer measures this really doesn't have anything to do with the process of actually making a wine <clears throat> other than showing you how to use the hydrometer okay so see I told you funnels are handy funnels are very handy especially that size so we have that now from those folks who remember chemistry back in the day <clears throat> when we have a warm liquid it's apt to absorb more dissolved solids or apt to absorb more solids <clears throat> so now we can see magically um, that there's virtually no sugar left. There's a couple of granules floating around. If this had been room temperature or cold water, it would have absorbed that nearly as fast. So I was just using it, the temperature for uh, just for this little experiment. So now I'm going to put this back in the tube and watch this not work correctly. In theory, it should, but I haven't actually tested this. So I actually got a little bit too much. pour some back so there's our tube of liquid now I'm gonna go get the hydrometer again drop it in and now you can see yay it worked now you can see that it's actually measuring it's registering something see how much further that sticks up that actually is sticking up you can't see it on camera but um, it's sticking up and we rotate it to the scale I'm looking for potential alcohol by volume if I were to ferment this right now I would have right about five percent uh, alcohol um, if I were to ferment this and the yeast fermented every last drop of sugar out of it um, but we act what we actually want is the triple scale of the specific gravity scale on this and this is not nearly enough sugar to actually start a batch of wine it's just for an example but it is um, let's see my specific gravity at the moment is 1.03 so that's what I'm running at right now and if I were to ferment this at 1.03 and it ran through its fermenting cycle when I finished it would hopefully be down that low to zero and then I could use a handy dandy little uh, 
formula that I'm going to give you here in just a minute to figure out what the actual alcohol content is. But the main use for this, again, is to figure out what your alcohol content is if you really care about that. I generally don't, but it is a great tool for figuring out if your fermentation is dead. Your fermentation is going to be dead when there's no sugar left. So uh, if you drop it in and it goes all the way down, it's done. Uh, some yeasts are programmed or uh, designed uh, specifically to, ye to leave so much sugar in a batch. So if you have yeast like that, like sweet mead yeast, are designed to leave a specific amount of sugar in the batch. And I'm not sure what that is at the moment because I'm still playing with the yeast. But um, when the specific gravity reaches that point, uh, that's when you know it's dead. It's not going to go any further. So, and the other cool thing about this, I'm not sure about other places. Oh, yuck, I got water on it. Um, it actually tells you what the conversion rate is on the this tube. But I'm going to give you this information uh, in the video here in just a second. But this is, uh, and it actually will tell you for, um, say, starting specific gravity starting for dry wine. You want it to be between 1.085 and 1. Uh, one zero zero or for sweet wine you want it to be between one point one four zero and one point one six zero and generally I don't start anything that's below one point uh, one six myself so um, but I like sweet stuff too so um, there is a temperature variant in this um, for every this is calibrated to be um, uh, at eighty four degrees and I'm not sure what the temperature on this is, but you want to get a temperature measurement as well. Um, <clears throat> and it gives you what the offset is for the, the temperature variation, and I'll put that in the video as well. So, um, alright, so that's the sugar water. Now, oh, just spilled sugar water all over my lap. Lovely. So, that's our sugar water, which I'm probably just going to toss later. This is our wine. So we're going to get an actual measurement from real, live, well, hopefully dead wine. Ooh, wish you guys could smell that. That smells great. All right, so I'm going to pop this bad boy back out. And it would help if there weren't so many bubbles, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to pop this in. And I can tell, I've still got quite a bit of yeast left in there, quite a bit of sugar left in there, but not nearly as much as I started. I believe my sugar level was about 1.5 on this stuff, or 1.15 um, uh, or 1.14 on this, and it is now down to 1.03. So that's the difference, and that may be the actual norm. This yeast uh, variant may be done with it. Uh, it stopped bubbling, so I'm going to guess it's done at 1.03. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And now that it's got all sorts of wine stuff on it, um, I'm going to have to rinse that out here in just a second, which is probably why I'm getting stuff on this. So I'm going to put this to the side and recap that and take a swig out of this. Oh my god. I'll let the wife try. Holy cow. Yeah, her response was holy cow. Um yeah, that's really good, especially for not being cleared yet. That's really good. The the not being cleared stuff kinda gives you a funky fuzzy taste. Um but once this is cleared, this is gonna be really good. This is actually gonna be Christmas presents for relatives and stuff. So, um, I'm going to give you the formulas here in just a second, but that's going to be the end of the actual recording video. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to um, give me a buzz, and uh, I'm going to finish off this tube.